Joseph's story begins in a family setting filled with intense emotions. He was the beloved son of Jacob, born from the deep love between Jacob and his favorite wife, Rachel. For years, Rachel endured the anguish of barrenness while watching her sisters conceive and give birth. This trial weighed heavily on her and Jacob, who longed for the blessing of parenthood. Each new cycle brought renewed hope that finally the Lord would bless them with a child. Rachel, with a heart full of faith, prayed fervently for a miracle, while Jacob sought comfort in the divine promises passed down by his ancestors. Then, on a blessed day, the Lord answered Rachel's prayers. She felt the first stirrings of life within her womb, a sensation that filled her with hope and gratitude. From his birth, Joseph received all of Jacob's love and care, which naturally sparked jealousy and resentment among his brothers. Jacob, who had waited so long for Joseph's arrival, saw him not just as a divine gift, but as a renewal of his own life after years of sorrow due to Rachel's barrenness. However, this favoritism did not go unnoticed by Jacob's other sons, who viewed Joseph's special treatment with bitterness. The family bonds, which should have been a source of support and unity, became entangled in jealousy and hostility. The family dynamic reached its peak when Jacob gifted Joseph a coat of many colors, a public display of his special affection. This show of favoritism further inflamed the negative feelings of Joseph's brothers, exacerbating an already tense atmosphere within the family. As Joseph grew, he was also haunted by mysterious visions and dreams that revealed a grand future. His dreams, though enigmatic at first, contained profound messages about his future authority and leadership over his family. In one of these dreams, Joseph saw himself standing in the field, binding sheaves of wheat with his brothers. Suddenly, Joseph's sheaf stood upright, while his brother's sheaves bowed down to his. This dream symbolized the authority and leadership Joseph would one day hold over his family, a foreshadowing of his future greatness. In another dream, Joseph saw the sun, the moon, and eleven stars bowing down to him, representing his father, mother, and brothers. These dreams, revealed to his family, were correctly interpreted as a sign that Joseph would exercise even greater authority over his family, a destiny that stirred a mix of admiration and resentment among his brothers. But the worst was yet to come. The betrayal by Joseph's brothers marked a dark turning point in his life. The climax of this conflict occurred when Jacob sent Joseph to check on his brothers, who were tending the flock. The opportunity for revenge arose as Joseph approached and his brothers saw him from a distance. In an act of deliberate and premeditated betrayal, they plotted against him, conspiring to kill him. The seething hatred in Joseph's brothers found an outlet in the form of planned violence, and they decided it was time to rid themselves of the brother who had caused them so much resentment. However, in a moment of relative mercy, one of the brothers, Reuben, intervened, suggesting they not kill him, but throw him into a dry pit. Even this compassion was ruthless, as the ultimate goal was to get rid of Joseph without directly shedding his blood. When Joseph arrived, he was overpowered by his own brothers, who cast him into the darkness of the pit and left him there to die. Yet, his complete ruin was not in the brothers' plans. Instead of allowing Joseph to die in the pit, they decided to sell their brother as a slave. The arrival of passing merchants provided the perfect opportunity to dispose of Joseph while still profiting from his misfortune. Thus, in an act of unspeakable betrayal, they sold Joseph into slavery, bidding farewell to their brother with coldness as he was dragged away, separated from his family and everything he knew. This dark episode marked the beginning of Joseph's painful and redemptive journey, where he would face the depths of suffering and injustice before finding his redemption. If you're interested in this content, I invite you to subscribe to the channel and click the bell to turn on notifications. This way, YouTube will recommend more videos like this to you, 
Without further ado, let's dive into the content. After being taken by the merchants, Joseph found himself in an unfamiliar world, far from his homeland, his family, and everything he knew. Abruptly torn from his familiar environment, he was handed over to caravan traders, who took him on a hard journey through strange and unknown lands. The familiar landscape of Canaan gradually faded as the caravan moved through the desert towards Egypt, a distant and exotic kingdom majestically situated on the banks of the Nile River. Once sold as a slave, Joseph found himself in the house of Potiphar, an Egyptian official of high rank and captain of Pharaoh's guard. In this unfamiliar and challenging environment, Joseph faced a series of trials, but his moral integrity remained unshaken. From the moment he arrived at Potiphar's house, Joseph demonstrated exceptional skills and a tireless work ethic. His dedication and commitment soon caught Potiphar's attention, who recognized Joseph's potential and elevated him to a position of authority and trust within the house. However, Joseph's rise sparked envy and resentment among the other servants, especially Potiphar's wife. Enchanted by Joseph's appearance and character, she began to make improper advances towards him, seeking to seduce him. He resisted the temptations and refused to compromise his moral integrity, even when it meant facing consequences. In a particularly notable incident, Potiphar's wife tried to seduce Joseph by force, grabbing him in a moment of vulnerability. However, Joseph, maintaining his loyalty to Potiphar and most importantly to God, managed to break free, leaving his garment in her hands as evidence of his innocence. Joseph's rejection of Potiphar's wife's advances triggered a violent reaction from her. Feeling shamed and humiliated by being rejected, she falsely accused Joseph of trying to attack her, casting him into an abyss of injustice and suffering. Potiphar, blindly trusting his wife's words, did not hesitate to take decisive action. Without thoroughly investigating the truth of the accusations, he ordered that Joseph be immediately thrown into prison. For Joseph, who had lived a life of moral integrity and devotion to God, the prison represented an abyss of despair and anguish. Being unjustly imprisoned for a crime he did not commit was a painful test of his faith and belief in divine justice. However, even in the shadows of the prison, Joseph did not lose his faith in God. He found solace and strength in the certainty that God was with him even in the most difficult moments. Instead of succumbing to despair, Joseph sought ways to serve others and show compassion to his fellow prisoners. His moral integrity and unwavering faith were not shaken by adverse circumstances, but were only strengthened by them. It was in prison that Joseph had the opportunity to exercise a special gift given by God, the gift of interpreting dreams. During his time behind bars, he encountered two important men from Pharaoh's palace, the chief cupbearer and the chief baker. Both were troubled by enigmatic dreams that tormented them. With divine intervention, Joseph was able to interpret these dreams accurately, revealing their true nature and foreshadowing future events. The chief cupbearer, responsible for serving wine to Pharaoh, had a peculiar dream he saw himself in a vineyard where there was a vine with three branches. On these vines, there were grapes that quickly ripened, were harvested and squeezed into a cup he was holding. In the dream, he stood before Pharaoh, serving him the wine he had just prepared. This unusual vision deeply disturbed the chief cupbearer, leaving him unsure of its meaning. The chief baker, responsible for preparing bread for Pharaoh, had an equally strange dream. He saw himself carrying three baskets of bread on his head. On top of the baskets were all kinds of baked goods that birds began to eat. This dream, filled with unsettling images, left the chief baker uneasy and worried about its meaning. Seeing the two men's troubled state, Joseph, with his God-given gift of interpreting dreams, approached them. 
He listened carefully to the accounts of the cupbearer and baker's dreams, and then, with humility and confidence in God, offered clear and precise interpretations. Joseph explained to the chief cupbearer that the dream about the vine represented the restoration of his position with Pharaoh. The three branches symbolized three days, after which he would be restored to his former role as Pharaoh's servant. This interpretation brought relief and hope to the chief cupbearer, as it meant he would soon be freed from prison and regain his prestigious position in the palace. Overjoyed, the cupbearer promised that if the dream came true and he was freed, he would ensure Joseph's immediate release upon his return to his position of influence. On the other hand, the interpretation of the chief baker's dream carried a grim message. Joseph explained that the three baskets of bread also represented three days, but unfortunately, after this period, the chief baker would be executed and his body exposed to be devoured by birds. This interpretation was received with despair and anguish by the chief baker as it revealed a terrible fate that would soon be realized. Joseph's precise interpretations were confirmed when three days later, Pharaoh restored the chief cupbearer to his position, as predicted by Joseph. Sadly, the fate of the chief baker also came true when he was executed, just as Joseph had foretold. However, despite his release, the chief cupbearer initially seemed to forget his promise to intercede for Joseph before Pharaoh. It appeared that Joseph's hope of freedom was still distant as he remained behind bars, waiting for divine intervention. But time passed, and approximately two years later, Pharaoh had a dream that deeply troubled him. In his dream, he saw seven fat cows being devoured by seven thin and hungry cows, and seven full ears of grain being consumed by seven thin and withered ears. Unable to find anyone in his kingdom who could interpret the meaning of this dream, the chief cupbearer finally remembered Joseph and his exceptional ability to interpret dreams. Thus, the chief cupbearer recalled Joseph and his God-given gift and told Pharaoh how Joseph had accurately interpreted his and the chief baker's dreams while they were in prison. Following the cupbearer's recommendation, Pharaoh immediately ordered that Joseph be brought to his presence. So Joseph was summoned from prison to stand before Pharaoh, where he had the opportunity to interpret Pharaoh's dream. With divine guidance, Joseph explained that Pharaoh's dream was a revelation of seven years of abundance, followed by seven years of severe famine that would strike Egypt and its neighboring lands. After successfully interpreting Pharaoh's dream, Joseph was immediately elevated to the position of governor over all the land of Egypt. This event marked a drastic change in Joseph's life, transforming him from an unjustly accused prisoner to a position of authority and influence in the most powerful kingdom of the time. As governor, Joseph was given the responsibility of managing the years of abundance and the years of famine that Egypt would face, according to the interpretation of Pharaoh's dream. He was tasked with overseeing the storage and distribution of food during the seven years of plentiful harvest, ensuring that Egypt was prepared for the seven years of famine that would follow. With his wisdom, organizational skills, and trust in God, Joseph implemented a comprehensive plan to store grain during the years of abundance. He oversaw the construction of granaries and storehouses throughout Egypt, ensuring that large quantities of food were collected and preserved for the years of scarcity to come. Additionally, Joseph established fair policies to distribute food during the years of famine, ensuring that both Egyptians and people from neighboring lands had access to the necessary supplies to survive. His wise and just management during this challenging period was crucial in mitigating suffering and preserving Egypt's stability. Joseph, now a man of influence and power, met his future wife unexpectedly. Asenath, who would become Joseph's wife, was the daughter of Potiphera. The biblical text does not detail the specifics of their meeting, but it is likely they met through daily interactions in Pharaoh's household. 
With Joseph established as governor of Egypt, he not only achieved great personal success, but also used his position to benefit his family. During the years of famine, his family in Canaan was suffering from the scarcity of food, and Jacob, his father, instructed his sons to go to Egypt to seek provisions. When Joseph's brothers arrived in Egypt seeking food, they were directed straight to Joseph, who was in charge of food distribution. Though they did not recognize the powerful man before them as their own brother, Joseph immediately recognized them. However, his brothers did not recognize him, unable to fathom that the brother they had sold into slavery years ago was now the governor of Egypt. Moved by a mixture of emotions, Joseph decided to test his brothers to see if they had changed since selling him. He accused them of being spies and proposed a test to check their honesty. He ordered that one of them return to fetch their youngest brother Benjamin, while the others remained as hostages. Joseph's brothers returned to Canaan and reported everything to Jacob, who initially hesitated to let Benjamin go, fearing the loss of another son as he had lost Joseph. However, the persistent famine forced them to return to Egypt with Benjamin. Seeing his youngest brother, Joseph was deeply moved and ordered a meal to be prepared for them. During the banquet, he had to excuse himself to recover from the overwhelming emotions. He then revealed his true identity to his brothers, disclosing that he was indeed Joseph, the brother they had sold into slavery many years before. The revelation of Joseph's identity was a moment of great emotion and reconciliation, he forgave his brothers for their past actions and comforted them, assuring them that everything had happened according to God's plan to save them from the famine and preserve Jacob's lineage. Joseph instructed his brothers to return to Canaan, share everything with Jacob, and bring him to live in Egypt. Jacob and his sons, including Joseph, settled in Egypt where they lived safely and prosperously under Joseph's and Pharaoh's protection. Joseph's rise to the position of governor not only fulfilled God's purpose for his life, but also brought prosperity and security to the people of Egypt during a time of hardship. His God-given gift of interpreting dreams not only freed him from prison, but also played a crucial role in preserving life and prosperity in Egypt. As governor, Joseph received the title Zaphonath Panea, which means Savior of the Land. This title not only reflected his new position of authority and influence, but also acknowledged his critical role in preserving the nation during the years of famine. Joseph's appointment as governor marked a turning point in Egypt's history and solidified his place as one of the most important and respected leaders in the kingdom's history. One of the most powerful lessons we can draw from Joseph's life is the importance of persistence and perseverance in the face of adversity. Even when he faced moments of profound injustice, Joseph never lost his faith in God and his conviction that there was a greater purpose behind his trials. Joseph's story reminds us of the importance of forgiveness and reconciliation. Despite being sold into slavery by his own brothers and unjustly imprisoned, Joseph found the capacity to forgive those who had wronged him. His forgiveness not only brought healing to his family, but also demonstrated the strength and generosity of his character. Another fundamental aspect of Joseph's story is the evidence of divine providence at work. Even in the darkest moments of his life, God was present guiding his steps and using his experiences to fulfill his purposes. Joseph's rise to power in Egypt was not only a testament to his ability and wisdom, but also proof of God's care and plan for his life. Like Joseph, we can trust that even in the most difficult times, God is with us, guiding us and empowering us to overcome any obstacle that may arise. May we learn from Joseph's life and strive to follow his example of faith, integrity, and trust in God in all areas of our lives. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe to the channel, leave a like, and click on one of the two videos that will appear to keep watching.
Take care and God bless.